Okay, so I'm just going to go through question six and question seven quickly because we ran out of time to do it in class. Um, there was a few technical issues, so um, I'll just go through it quickly um, now for anyone who was stuck on these questions. Um, so we finished question five, we'll head to question six. Question six, we talk about the uh, random function. So that was in the notes as well, in the variables notes. <clears throat> um, and it talks about this random method here. So um, when you have a variable, so here we have a double variable. So that um, double is similar to float. So just pretend that that's float. And we say float r is equal to random. Um, and it's got the value n, where n is um, any real number. So if you give it the number 7, this variable here will be allocated a number between 0 and 6. So it won't go to 7 um, because that number is exclusive. Uh, we can also do something like float r is equal to random 3 to 8. Um, so instead of giving it one number, so if you give it one number, it goes from zero to the number. Um, or if you give it a um, two inputs, um, this is the range. So between three and eight, this number is inclusive. So you can get the number three and this number is exclusive. So really we can get, um, we'll never get eight. So if I print my value R. Um, I'm getting 5.082 um, because we've got a float. If I wanted a whole number, so an integer, I would need to cast that as an int. Um, and we know that whenever we uh, are dealing with integers, so this part here, as we saw before, will give you um, a float value. So if we're changing a float into an integer, that means that we always round down. And because we're rounding down, that's the reason why we will never get to the number 8. Because even if we get 7.99999 um, and we're dealing with integers, it will round down. So here we go, 6. And every time we run it, we'll get a different number. Um, so that's just a little introduction to the random feature in processing. So now we want to use it to randomly generate Lots of lines which have different lengths, colors, um, and different thickness of the lines as well. So um, let's create our program in here. Just set everything up. So I'm just going to set the size of the screen a bit bigger so everyone can see. Okay, so lots of things um, we need to take into account here. Um, we talked a little bit about the difference between global and local variables as well. Um, if you try to do this one using global variables, you find that it won't work. So say if I wanna create a global variable that contains um, the thickness of the lines. So, um, a the stroke weight, or we can't call it stroke weight. Um, I'll just call it stroke w um, is equal to, a, we want it to be an integer, a random number between, and what do we want? Between zero and five, so it would be zero and six. Um, if we were to make this a global variable, as we're running through our code, uh, first thing we do is these global variables get initialized, um, and we only get this one random value. So if I was to go stroke weight, stroke W, um, the idea of this program is that every time draw loops around, every time it loops, um, a new stroke weight is allocated for a new line that's being drawn. So we're not drawing a line yet, um, but every time we loop through, the stroke weight will change, the location of the line, the color will change, and so every single time we need a new random number to be generated. But what we're seeing is that this random number is only generated once um, when this variable is initialized. So what we need to do 
is every time we run through draw, we need to assign it a new random number. So instead of giving it a value there, I'm going to um, declare the variable up here globally so anywhere can access it. Um, and then every time I run through draw, I'm going to give stroke w a new random value. So now every time it's going to print um, a new value. So we can test that just by throwing that in draw. Oops. Um, oh, I should have print line. And there we go. So every single time we get a new number between um, 0 and 5. So that's the type of thing we want to do. So we've dealt with the stroke weight, so the thickness of the line, that's good. Um, now we need to look at the, um, the color of the line, so the stroke, and also the different lengths of the line. So that means that our X and Y points for our lines will also need to change. Um, so I'm going to create some variables for that. So I'm going to do X1, Y1, X2, Y2. You can declare um, your variables like this if it's all the same type. Um, and another one I want to do, because we want a random color every time, we want um, three random values for our RGB code. So um, I want a different red, a different green, and a different blue every time. So um, let's set out our code first. So we've got the stroke weight. We also want the color of the line. So the stroke, um, we want it to be RGB. And then our line is X1, Y1, X2, Y2. So that's all good, but we need to give these variables some values. Um, so we've given, let's do some code comments to make this a little nicer. So um, set random values is the first thing we should do. Um, and then this is the code to draw line. Um, we don't want that print line statement anymore. So let's set our random values up here. Everything needs a new random value. So x1. Um, x1 should get an integer random value. And we want it to be anywhere over the x axis, which will be from 0 to 600. Um, but to keep our, um, our program dynamic so that it can change if we change the size of our screen, I'm going to go from 0 to width. Okay, um, and I'm going to do the same thing for x2. I'm just going to do a bit of copying and pasting to make this quicker. The same for y1, except I'm going to do height. Um, and then again for y2, and I'm going to do the height. So now um, we've dealt with having varying lengths. Um, so we've done the stroke weight, we've done the coordinates, and now we want to deal with the color. So um, our red in our RGB code, oh, that's something that, oh no, we did that. Um, the red in our RGB code will be a random number between 0 and 256 um, because the numbers for your RGB will go between 0 and 255. Um, and so we'll do 256 because we remember that this number is exclusive. Um, and we're going to do that for the G and the B. Um, so now every time draw runs, it will go through every single one of these variables and it will assign it with a new random value given the range that you've allocated it. Um, so when we press play here, it's probably just going to be a lot of um, lines appearing on the screen. It might be a little bit crazy, but we'll see. There we go. So lots of different lines every time. It's a different color, different thickness, different location, um, which is exactly what we wanted. So it's good.